So I wrote code slash made a program that should output a comic strip with five panels every time. Now the twist is, every time I run and execute the program, it should deliver not random images slapped together, but instead new compelling cohesive stories with the data I give it. Kind of like giving a computer a bunch of Legos to build stuff, but it builds different stuff every time. And I have no control over what it's building. And the program worked. I drew about 50 different comic panels, put them in a folder called data, and wrote code allowing the program to take five panels from the data and tell a story, but tell a different one each time. I'm not gonna bore you with the details of how I did it, because it's complicated, but if you're interested, let me know. The more options I had the program choose from making its own randomized decisions, the more we got different outcomes. Nerd stuff! Uh, using a form of Java in this processing editor, programmer talk, you don't really need to know, but this form of design is called generative design. Imagine a comic, maybe with the same characters, but every time you read it, you don't know what to expect, but unlimited and endless possibilities. According to Wikipedia, generative design is an iterative design process that involves a program that will generate a certain number of outputs that meet certain constraints. A designer, in this case yours truly, will still need to fine tune the feasible regions by changing minimal and maximal values of an interval in which a variable of the program meets the set of constraints in order to reduce or augment the number of outputs to choose from. There's more to it obviously, but the point is, think of generative design as a type of design where you're creating the systems that's, that are making the artwork, that's making stuff, right? And it's making just a bunch of it, like a lot of it, and you don't know what to expect, but you know that it's picking data from a certain point, but beyond that, you don't know what you're gonna get. Or you know you're getting different versions slash iterations of the same thing, so in this case, I'm getting a comic strip with five panels every time, but I don't know what panels are gonna be chosen. I don't know what order they're gonna come in. You can think of it that way. So think about it. You and I can never read the same results unless we read it at the same time or save the results, which I did. I save the outputs from the run. Uh, all I do is the build, like the data, the tools, the framework, foundation, whatever you wanna call it. And then I allow the computer surprise me with multiple outcomes. Obviously, in some of those outcomes, I'd know what to expect since I created the data. Like, I can imagine how some of it will be put together in those cases they are. But for the most part, I'm surprised. I thought this was a fun idea. Just imagine, it's like Telltale Games, but like comics. And imagine you're reading a comic, right? So this is like an instance. You're reading a comic, it has the same characters, the same universe. But every time you open the comic to read, it's like everything's different. Characters are making different decisions. Maybe in some cases they're behaving differently, you know, and the list goes on. And then if you like an iteration, you can save it or just allow yourself be surprised every time you open the comic. Now, for those who know, I graduated in May with a master's in fine art, but this wasn't my thesis. If you're in interested in what my thesis actually was, I'll leave a link to that in the description. But I created this version of the program while I was in a emerging technology class, and I only did it for the class, but I think it would have been an interesting thesis if I tackled it. In fact, the program I did was kind of primitive, to be honest. Like, if somebody who had really premier programming skills were to partner up, I think this could be really, really big. In this case, it's almost like having the program and the comic be valuable in different ways. The comic's valuable in the sense that, you know, it could be one of a kind, especially if you don't save it. Uh, and the program is valuable in the sense that that's the thing that's, you know, throwing out two things, multiple things at once, or multiple iterations each time you run it, right? So you're always entertained every time you run it. You know, well, maybe you're entertained, but at least you're given different options and it has a lot of replay value, if you know what I mean. Like this comic that I did is just designed to pop out a comic strip with just five panels. Imagine a program to pop out several panels telling like a full length story and maybe the panels and the way everything's put together can even be more dynamic. Obviously, I would need to make more data, but um, for the most part, just imagine it and I think it'd be really cool. An example could be maybe you open a comic book and Outcome 1, Tony Stark defeats Thanos. Outcome 2, Thanos defeats don't Tony and kills everybody. And Outcome 3, Tony and Thanos have a baby. Everybody lives happy ever after. Possibilities are endless. So you can see this is how the program looks and uh, you see a little bit of the comments for anybody who knows anything about programming. And this is kind of like some form of JavaScript and stuff like that, but that's just a comment. It's not really doing anything in the program. It's just kind of letting people know what it is. And it's basically documentation for people who are coming into the program for the first time, having a decent idea of what's going on. And then, you know, variable, it's like a, you know, if statement, it's not the best program, I'll be honest, but I think it did what I wanted it to do. And, you know, if I had access to 
even better programmers. They'd be able to do even better stuff. So I know a lot of you guys are looking at this and going, what? But I also thought this was another cool thing that I have in my tool set that's different from just drawing. Uh, in my bachelor's for my undergrad, I actually did computer science for a little bit. So for, for some of it, I wasn't too like lost. Like I kind of knew what I was do uh, doing. And here we have like all, over 280 lines of code. So it's not even that, it's not that crazy. But I have some experience programming and I graduated with a minor in computer science and then uh, a major in fine arts. And then I did my uh, master's, graduated in May with concentration uh, over visual communication design. Here, I run the program with the play button at the top. And here you're seeing all the iterations, right? And I, I call this comic tres ojos. There was li like, this was just a test, right? I was just testing it out with, the, with what I could do. And it's called tres ojos. There wasn't really any big story to it, but I just put it together and it's, you see it's doing several versions, but the program is also told to save all the versions that are being thrown out. They're being popped out of the program. So, and it's going to be saved into a different folder called output. And that way I can go to output it also saved as a PNG. And I, I did that on purpose. So I can go to the output and then just look at all the versions that were saved. So here you can see generative, uh, I called it since it's gen generative design, but I'm using it to tell a narrative, I call it generative. Wink, wink. And then, you know, I have the data that it's taken from. That's the actual file, the uh, .pde for processing. And then the output is where all the images, all the comic strips are being saved. And I save them in this order and stuff like that. And if you're familiar with processing, especially if you're really familiar with processing, you kind of have a really good idea of what's going on and this is data this is all these are all the images that are that the program is using to create the comic strips so yeah this video was different but I hope you guys enjoyed it and you can let me know what your favorite comic strip outcomes were so guys if you're new to this channel please hit that like uh, hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything and if you really like this video you can share it on social media as well all those things especially watching the video to the end and you know watching checking out my channel all that stuff help the channel a great deal for those who do that regularly I like to thank you and for those who have purchased my comics because also for those who don't know I'm a published creator uh, creator of Apple Black Picasso published in Saturday AM, details to everything you could possibly need where you can read the first four chapters of my word, uh, purchase the first volumes, volume one and volume two of Apple Black, and so much more will be in the description below. My Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff will be in the description below, including where you can get two free months of Skillshare and online classes, and there are probably some programming classes in there as well, so you can use uh, the link in the description to get two free months of Skillshare. So I'm Manga, and I'm Audi.